morning, everybody. Let's all stand together. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. Find somebody close to you. Welcome them. Tell them it's good to see you here today. We're going to have a wonderful time of worship in the word. Let's just begin to lift up the name of Jesus. God, we glorify you. We magnify you.
shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Mighty hope, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Sing chains will fall, priests in shame.
Over every situation, over every nation, every enemy is conquered, every stronghold is brought down. I speak victory. I speak victory. We're bringing home every son and daughter. Rulers of darkness have to bow. I speak victory. I speak victory. Victory in the name of Jesus. I speak victory.
victory in the name of Jesus. Come on, call on that name right now. Call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is victory. There is victory. There is healing right now in Jesus' name. Strongholds are being brought down in Jesus' name. I don't know if you come in here with something right now, but if you just release your praise, I can guarantee you that he's going to take care of it. Because there is victory in the name of Jesus. Our steps are ordered. Every stronghold is brought down in Jesus' name today. There is victory. There is victory in the name. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory over my family. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. We call you Jesus. We call you Jesus. 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 There is victory in your name. There's victory in the name. We call you Jesus. 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 There is victory in your name. Victory in the name. Right now, can we just release our praise all across this place? God is here. This is a wonderful atmosphere for every heart to be open, for every need to be met right now in Jesus' name. Just begin to praise him for it. Whatever it is right now, just begin to praise him for it. God, I thank you for the healing. God, I thank you for the restoration. God, I thank you for restoring our families, God. I thank you for the healing of our bodies and of our minds, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We lift you up, God. presence of the Almighty today, just to feel his touch, to know that he's near. It's so refreshing and encouraging just to be in his presence. Isn't God good? Amen. We appreciate him so. We want to join together in prayer, and uh, it's important for us to release our faith. It's not enough just to speak words. We need to believe and stand in faith and, and declare that God will do what his word has said he will do. Today, we'd like for you to remember, um, I have a 95-year-old uncle, uh, Frank Hutton, who had surgery on Tuesday for a hernia, and then he fell on Thursday and broke his hip. And uh, we want, want the Lord just to touch him and, and uh, minister to him. My aunt is 93, I believe, and uh, she's not in the best of health as well. So appreciate you praying for them. Also, we want to remember... Uh, Sister Margot Jones and Sister Rosemary Jones. Um, Sister Rosemary has uh, a lot of health issues that she's struggling with. We just need to pray that the Lord would touch her. Also, Wes Baker, we want to pray for your father today. Uh, he received a diagnosis this week that doesn't sound good. We want to pray that the Lord would just minister to him and encourage this entire family, be with them. It's difficult. Uh, sometimes life gets just overwhelming. We deal with something that we weren't expecting. We're blindsided by something, and it just feels like a punch to the stomach. It takes our breath away. But when we speak that name, everything changes. He brings a serenity. He brings a tranquility. He brings a peace that, that surpasses all our understanding. And I don't know how people make it without God. Try to do it on your own. And that would just be terrible. But to know that the Lord strengthens our hands and enables us to move forward and to accomplish what he has purposed for our lives. We're just looking to him today. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's join together. Let's call on his name right now. Father, we thank you because we know in whom we believe and in whom we trust. 
We're leaning not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we're acknowledging you. And we know, Lord, that you will direct our paths. We're praying today for this entire congregation that you would minister to every man, woman, boy, and girl that's in this place. We pray, Lord, for Wes's father. We pray for Margo and Rosemary, for Frank and Barbara Hutton. We pray, Lord, that you would just minister in this place. God, accomplish everything that you intended to do here today as we surrender to you, as we yield ourselves to you, Lord. We're giving you the opportunity to work. We're stepping out of the way and allowing you to be in control of everything that is, that is done here today. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Before you're seated, why don't you greet at least four or five people Give them a big smile. Let them know that you're glad to see them in church today. It's good to, it's good to have one another. It's good to be part of the body of Christ, the blood-bought, redeemed of God. There's nothing on earth that can compare to the church. Um, the other day I had a pastor friend who was uh, telling me of a uh, visit that they had made gone to a home and prayed with this woman who uh, is a widow woman but she's struggling and uh, they prayed with her and then visited for a little while and they said is there anything that you need to do before we leave we are anything that we can do to help you before we leave and and uh, she said no nothing that I really need he said well we want to pray and we're just going to believe God's going to meet all of your needs and she said well you know what if you want to wash my di my dishes before you leave, go ahead and take care of that because we've already prayed. So sometimes it's not enough just to pray. Sometimes we have to step up and if there's a need, we have to fill that void, help out where we can. It's not enough to say, you know, be clothed and be on your way. we got to help people, meet with them, and minister to them where we can. That's really important. We need the body of Christ. We need one another. Uh, but it's 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 really necessary that we're constantly aware of the needs of others all around us. Be prepared to minister. Be prepared to wash those dishes. Amen. We're going to invite our ushers to come at this time. They're going to receive our morning offering. The Bible says that if we give, it will be given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God's blessings go far beyond our ability to even comprehend. God is good to us. So today we're giving with cheerful hearts. Why don't you focus your attention on the screen? We've got a lot of stuff that's coming up. It's really important for you to know what's happening. God bless you as you give today. Smith, who's helping us to focus our, our prayer to, to all be praying for the same thing. It brings great unity, and uh, it's necessary. It's important. Look what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were together in one mind and in one accord. There's something to be said about being unified. So thank you, and uh, if you weren't able to make it today, 
try to uh, be here next Sunday at 1040 for that time. It's a great way to prepare your heart, condition your mind, get yourself ready to come in here and to receive God's word and to, to worship him. And it really, it really makes a difference. Uh, you know, when most of us were in school, we didn't deal with the issues that kids are dealing with today. I heard just the other day one school system had been open less than a week, and they'd already had two guns found by, by uh, the staff. Students had brought guns to school. You know, it's a, it's a time of great uncertainty, and, and it's a troubling time. It's, a, it's very disturbing things that our kids have to deal with today that, that a few years ago was never even thought about. And so this Wednesday, we're going to be praying over all of our students, praying for God's hand of protection to be upon them, that God would, would keep them safe. But we're also going to be praying that God would use them, that they could be salt and light, that they could make a difference where, wherever they go to school, whatever grade they're in, that they would be a witness and that they would be effective in their efforts to uh, just be Christ-like and, and, and to be authentic. That's what the world really needs to see, authentic Christianity. And so we're going to be praying over them on Wednesday. And then after we pray, we're going to go over to the fellowship hall for a great time of uh, ice cream and just enjoying one another's company. It's going to be a nice evening. So that's coming up this Wednesday. Um, if anyone uh, has some uh, family members, some students that you want us to pray for, bring them to church on Wednesday. We want to be able to, to do that. All right. Right now we're going to dismiss all the kids between the ages of 2 and 11. There's Daniel Bailey over here. He's ready to go. We're going to have a great time today. Let's give them a hand as they go.
begin to love him and worship him right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. So good to be in the Lord's house. Forever enough. Amen. We're in a battle. A couple of people realize that. They say, We're in a battle today. Can I tell you something? The devil doesn't just want you bound, he wants you buried. But he that the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Stand with me. Book of John, chapter 11. storms he had cast out devils he done it all but but this time he done something that had never been seen and it was the miracle of the Lazarus resurrection that garnered attention like it had never before and it had thrust him towards Calvary it was intentional I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. Lazarus got sick on purpose. Not Lazarus' design. We sometimes think the things we're going through in life, well, I got news for you, it's not all about the devil. Sometimes the Lord says, have you considered my servant Job? Right? I say we're in a battle. John 11 verse 20 though says this, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. She didn't wait for him to get to the house. She's, she's, she's going out to meet him. But Mary sat still in the house. And that's, that's kind of Mary. We'll, we'll talk about that. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. I want to speak on this subject. But I know that even now, 
You may be seated. Here's the thing. Men and women don't shop the same way. They just don't. Women have a way of shopping that is foreign to men. Now, it's not foreign to me because I've been surrounded by estrogen for a long, long time. I grew up in a house with a mom and two sisters. I have a wife and two daughters. And for the longest time, we had girl dogs. We just lost Jack-Jack. It was nice to have some other testosterone on the premises. But now we have Adeline as well. Hi, baby. And, and it's not, I've discovered that they don't approach things the way that we do, men. So typically, and maybe this isn't true of all men, but typically, when a man wants something, it's because he doesn't have it and he needs it, or he has it and it's not any good. It's not good enough, it's not the latest and the greatest, or it's broke. But whatever it is, he's identified Want, need, go get. He goes, he gets it, he buys it, he brings it home, he uses it. That's it. It's not that complicated. My wife, God love her, she will not say, hey, I want to go buy some new clothes. I, I just, I'm in the mood for a new dress. No, what she'll say is, I've got nothing to wear. That changes the scope of everything. Well, now I feel bad that you have nothing to wear. Well, honey, we ought to go get you a new wardrobe because you've got nothing to wear. Martha sends a message to Jesus. Now, had it been somebody else, they may have said, if it, Dale, had you sent Jesus the message, it may have sounded something like this. Hey, Lazarus is sick and he's almost going to die. Better get here pretty quick. That's not what Martha and Mary sent. You know what they said? They sent a note that said, the one that you love is, is, is ill. That's it. Talk about your guilt trips. Talk about your manipulation. The one that you love, Bruce, if you were worth anything at all, this one that's sick, it's not like all the other sick people. Who cares about them? This is the one that you love. The one that you, what they really meant was the one that we love is sick. Now, Jesus loved Lazarus. That, 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 and then and, and, and there's, some, there's some history there. There's, there's some belief in the, in the, and there's no proof of, John, there's no proof of, but there's belief that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were first cousins of Jesus. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. I don't know. I envision maybe it is, and maybe they grew up around each other. And Martha, you know, she's, she's, she's different than Mary. Right? She's different than Mary. I can tell you that just because they were born of the same people and they grew up in the same household, that doesn't make them the same. There's a lot about them the same, but Olivia and Sarah are different as can be. There's a Martha and a Mary there. One of them is, is and, and you may be confused. I'll let you decide which is which. But Mary, she's the one that broke the alabaster box. She's the one who kneels at Jesus' feet. She's the one that drapes her hair down. She's the one weeping and worshiping. Martha comes over and tells Jesus, hey, I need some help in here. Maybe Weepy Joe can uh, speed it up a little bit. This food's not going to cook itself. You know, Martha's passionate. But don't think for a moment that just because Martha's passionate that she doesn't have, she's not powerful. She is powerful. She's a powerful woman of faith. And I can imagine that when, so, so they sent the message, the one you love is, is ill, and Jesus waits you know the story well. He waits and he waits because he's, he, this is on purpose. This is intentional. There, there's a conspiracy, if you will, behind all of it. That these things have to happen so this thing can happen, so it can catapult us towards the cross. But, but, but what we have here is, is Martha and Mary 
what they know of it is their personal experience of it and that is our brother is sick and Jesus is able come and 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 come home come to Bethany we need you here we need some help and Jesus delays and I can envision that Mary it says sat still in the house and isn't that her way Mary the worshiper right Mary that the, she's introspective she's She's intuitive. She's discerning, right? She and, and, and Martha knows exactly who Jesus is, too. But Martha's got a little bit of an edge about her, right? And, and she, says, she says, hey, you know, if you'll read it, you, you'll go back. And, and uh, they're, they're trying to comfort and, and so on and so forth. But, but in verse 20, as soon as she, she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. I believe she was watching for him. I, maybe she set a watch. Maybe she put one of the young people out there and said, all right, when you see him coming, you ring the bell because I'm going to give him a little bit of an earful. And I almost think that Jesus, coming up the road, he sees her from a distance and he sees her coming. And he knows her. And, and keep in mind here, he knows what's going to happen. He knows the ending of this story. So he's not worried. Right? He's not worried. He knows what's getting ready to happen, Joe, but he sees her coming, and I almost think, I almost think he suppresses a little bit of a smile. Uh-oh. Watch this. I'm in for it now. And she does not disappoint. As soon as Martha shows up, you know what she says to Jesus? This is all your fault. Isn't that what she said? I mean, I may be paraphrasing a little bit. Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother hadn't died. This is your fault. You delayed. And she's grief stricken because her brother's died. And, and she's, you know, she's heartbroken because her brother's died. And in that moment, she's lashing out a bit, isn't she? I mean, she has a relationship here with Jesus, a personal relationship. They're followers of his ministry. And if they're related, maybe they're not. But if they are, there's a long-term relationship. She feels a bit of a comfort level and at ease, if you will, a bit of liberty to say, this is all your fault. You should have been here. We sent message, but you didn't show up. Nate, help me with this. Your faith has to stand when your heart can't. Your faith has to be able to stand when your heart can't stand. Sometimes it hurts worse when it's not about you, but it's about the one you love. Sometimes when the bad news isn't about you, but it's about them, it hurts even more. And, and you're shook to the core. Your, your life is rattled. Things are happening. And, 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 and you've got to find a way to let your faith stick. Let your faith stand because you'll be heartbroken. Because you, you, there's no rhyme. There's no reason. You've called on his name. You've prayed in his name. You've stood in his name. You've done his work in his name. Why did this have to happen? I don't understand. If you would have just been here. But when your heart is broken in two, your faith still has to stand. Yeah, your faith still has to stand even when the situation is tough. When the situation is, is, is haywire, when things aren't going the way they're supposed to go, when, when your life isn't turning out exactly like you had planned it, Kim, you, you, your, your heart's broken in two. It's in that moment you've got to tighten the spiritual belt and stiffen the spiritual back and let your faith stand for you. Because you've been depositing some things in that. And now you should be able to draw on the account of faith. And this is how God does business. And this is exactly what Martha does. Now watch what she says. Nathan, take me back here to the verse 22. You should have showed up, Andrew. You should have been there. You should have, you should have listened to the message. You should have gotten our word. But you didn't show up. And now look what's happened. But I know that even now, anybody ever have an even now moment? Anybody ever have an even now situation? 
even now when, when not, he's not just bound across his eyes and his hands and his feet, but he's buried. He's not just buried, but there's a stone rolled over the grave. I'm talking about moments in your life when it all looks wrong. Everything is doom and gloom and it's bad. And, and it's not, it's, maybe it's not even about you. It's that husband of yours. It's that wife. It's that daughter. It's that son. They're lost. They're bound. They're chained. They're, 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 they're buried in it. But Martha says, even now, I know. I know even now you can do it. Her faith began to stand up when her heart could not stand up. Not just buried, but bound. Not just buried, but bound. Not just bound, but stinking. The situation is so bad it reeks. That's where they find themselves. But her faith still stands in that situation. It looks like from her standpoint, from her viewpoint, it's past saving. Right? It's past saving. Had you been here before he died, you could have done something. And it almost feels like the even now statement is just a, a, a courtesy statement. But even now, but I don't think so. I think, I think all of a sudden her faith woke up in, in her heart. And I think all of a sudden she remembered who exactly who it was that she was talking to. Because make no mistake about it, she knew that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. He, she knew that he was Messiah. And, and I believe that she made the statement, but I know. I know, because I think there were some things in the past that made her know. Right? I think there were some, some experiences, some things that she witnessed, some things that she saw that made her know. But I know even now, Nehemiah, even now when the situation looks its darkest, it's its bleakest, even now when, when they've buried what I love, even now when what I love is bound and I can't get to what I love, even now when the situation looks its darkest, even now I know Jesus can step onto the scene. And, and it doesn't matter how buried it is. It doesn't matter how bound it is. It doesn't matter what the situation looks and feels like. I'm telling you, Jesus, when he walks onto the scene, that's when things start happening. People get liberated, even now. Even now that happens. So what we've got to do is we, we can't come to conclusions. Help me, Nate. Don't come to a conclusion before Jesus does. But we do that. We do that very quickly in our own lives. And I think sometimes we do it even quicker in the lives of the people we love. Don't come to a conclusion uh, but j just because the circumstance looks dark. I understand what an even now moment looks like. I've been in them myself, even now, she said. But I, I know that even now, even now implies something. Even now means it's as bad as it's ever going to be, Laura. Even now, though, I'm still going to stand on my faith. I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to stand on the promise that he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. I'll stand on that promise. I'm going to stand on the promise that he will not put more upon me than I can bear without making a way of escape. It may actually be, Joe, more than what you can bear. He didn't say, I'll never put more on you than you can bear. Sometimes the load, you can't lift it. But that's why he made a way of escape. And the way of escape is Jesus even now does that make sense yeah even now I understand that Jesus is going to do a work and I can't come to a conclusion about this it would have been fine had you been here that's that's Martha in her flesh in her hurt in her anger in her grief she came to a conclusion. This would have worked out, Dewey, but it's not going to work out. I, I, I've concluded that if Jesus would have just showed up when, when we called for him, we wouldn't be in this mess. But then her faith wakes up. And she says, 
but I know. And I, I don't even know if she's saying it to Jesus as much. Do you ever had to recite that to yourself? You ever have to do that? I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's when they tell you you've got leukemia. And, 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 and the symptoms say you got leukemia. And your body says it. And yet you don't say it. You go and you stand in the mirror and say, but I know. Even now, even now he can do it. Even now when the blood's trickling out of my nose, even right now, even now when I'm sick, even now when the doctor says, even now I know Jesus can show up. He can step into the situation. And as a church, we can't come to conclusions about the church before Jesus does. Don't come to a conclusion before Jesus does. Let's let Jesus be Jesus. What do you say? Let's let God be God. Let's let him rise up and be big. He's the one who, who, who uh, appoints. He's the one who pours out his spirit. Let's, let's be the worshipers that we're called to be. And I think, I think when you mix Mary's worship with Martha's faith, well, we just got the workings there. We got, this, we got the makings of a miracle right there. You, we, we've got to put our miracle working uh, shoes on. And that, that means in our worship. And that means in our faith when we exercise it. But not just calling on Jesus' name and begging him to do something. That's not what we're talking about. We're, we're declaring that he is good and his mercy endures forever. We're worshiping and lifting him up. And we're saying even now, no matter what it looks like, but I know. I know Jesus still heals, Rita. I know he's a healer. He's healed before. He'll do it again, even now. Even now. What happens, though, when he doesn't show up on time? Yep, even then. What happens when on time turns into really not on time? But even now, Julie, even now, he's going to work in my life. Even now, when my life goes the direction I wasn't expecting it to go. Even now, I know that he's able. I said, I know he's able. I don't know if he will. That's not what she, she said. I know that if you ask, you can get anything you want. You're the king. The king gets anything the king wants. He's the king. Even now, you can do it. Whether or not you do it doesn't change the fact that you're able to do it. But we, we get caught up on the performance when he's not performing in your life, though, what happens? Are you a praiser or are you a worshiper? It was delineated for us in Psalm 150. Praise him for his mighty acts. But we worship him for his excellent greatness. Because when God stops performing in my life, he's still worthy. He's still excellent. He's still awesome. He doesn't change from being great I am just because I didn't get what I wanted when I wanted it in the time I thought it was appointed and supposed to happen. I've done a lot of good stuff. I've worked really hard in your kingdom. But even now, I, I just got to stand and let my faith stand when my heart's broken in two. And I can't come to conclusions before Jesus does. We find ourselves here, Jesus showing up, and, and he, he plainly tells her, your brother's going to rise again. And she says, I know that, in the resurrection. And he says, I am the resurrection. You, you, don't, you don't know what you think you know. I'm convinced, Pastor, that half of the time, and when I say half the time, I mostly mean all the time. We don't know near what we think we know when it comes to Jesus. 
I, I'm not I'm not a hundred hundred percent convinced that we really know what we think we know the one thing that I like I like Paul he's very direct he's very pointed he's very deliberate um, and and in and, and I, I like Paul a lot but what he said was and I think this is the thing that we most probably want to grab a hold of I, I don't want to know anything about you but Jesus Christ and him crucified I don't think that's a bad approach to you <laughs> I don't think we always know what we think we know. She didn't know what she thought she knew. I know he will rise again. No, I mean right now. Because the resurrection just showed up on your doorstep. Sometimes the Lord's just going to do a miracle in your life. And sometimes he's just going to let you sit in a lion's den. Sometimes he's going to let you be thrown into the furnace. Sometimes the giant's going to be yelling at your name. Sometimes the mountain is going to be just that looming and that big. Other times he's just going to step into the situation and calm the sea. Peace, be still. We don't always know how he's going to do it. We don't know that he's going to do it. But we know he can do it. And that is enough. I believe the song says he's forever enough. He's always enough. He's more than enough. Even when he doesn't perform in my life, even now when things don't look like they're going to go my way, even now when, when everything is upside down, even now I still know that God is God and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Put your hands together. Lazarus was bound across his face. And the enemy wants to bind you across your face. It, 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 what it does is it, it hampers your ability to see spiritually where the Lord wants to take you. Lazarus was bound in his hands. He couldn't lift them up in worship. And he's bound in his feet. He can't travel the path. And he's buried in a tomb. And a stone rolled in front of it. And Jesus said, Grace, Jesus said, remove the stone. He wasn't talking to Lazarus. Somebody had to get involved here. There's a bunch of people bound and buried waiting for a church to roll away a stone so when the master shows up and he starts calling their name Lazarus come forth but it's not enough for Jesus to say come forth because you know why you can break forth and not break out you ever seen it you ever seen people that that sort of leave their life behind and come to church they're trying to break forth but they're not breaking out because they're hanging on to the to the wrapping around the eyes and they're 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 still tied up their feet are still shackled up you can, you can, and I can see Lazarus as he's trying to get out of there. You know, he's all bound up. And Jesus is like, my goodness. Hello? Is this on? Okay, let me tell you something else then. Because I thought it was implied when I said remove the stone. I need the church to be involved in the salvation of the lost he's already done everything he's gonna do it was it not enough to go to Calvary was it not enough to die for the sins of man and, and rise up from the grave was it not enough to ascend and then return to us in the form of the Holy Ghost filling our lives what we've got to do as a body of believers is not just roll the stone away Jesus then said loose him and let him go he wasn't talking to Lazarus and he wasn't talking to the grave clothes and he wasn't talking to the devil he was talking to the people standing around why don't somebody get up and go take that off his eyes 
and take that off his hands and take that off his feet. Because, Nate, you can be loosed and not let go. The stones rolled away. The dead's been called back to life. And he's still standing there hurting and bound and blind and deficient. And he's waiting for a church to wrap their arms around him and take those things off of him. Get those grave clothes off of him. Let him live again. Let him see spiritually where he needs to go. Let, let, her, let her lift her hands in worship and get, get those hands free. Let them dance the dance of freedom. Let them walk the path. Let them go. And that's what it was all about. Jesus was saying, come on, I need you. Joe, I need you. I need you involved in a church. I need you involved in an altar. I need you involved with, with people. This is our time, church. This is our hour. You know, the darker the night. Yes. Come on, don't make me result to cliches. But it's true. I've said this many times. Old sayings become old sayings for a reason. Yes. Yes, if I stood up here, and I'm not going to do this, Jacob, but if I stood up here and I had a little pin light, you'd see that pin light. But if I turned these lights out, you'd really see that pin light. Because the darkness around it, the absence of the light makes this light that much brighter. Even now, I know that no matter how dark it looks, even now, Jesus is still the light of the world. Come on, somebody. There's a bunch of Lazaruses out there waiting for somebody to call their name. You know, I've, I've thought to myself, I bet Jesus said Lazarus because if he'd have just walked up to that thing and said, come forth, all the graves in the planet would have just started popping open. Here they come, boy. But he had to get real specific. You know, he's Jesus and all. What's going on in your life? What's got you bound up? What's got your heart broken? Can I tell you something? He's more than enough. He's always enough. He's forever enough. He's more than enough, Joe. That's good news. That's good news. Lazarus, come forth. You don't need a little help with that, John. Because we do. But we're in this together. You know, Pastor, when you were talking about that a little bit earlier, I, I was thinking as I walked up here, I look around and I see the reeds here. And I see the reeds here. And, and there's the, the Montgomery clan. You know, we sort of, and the Smiths and Copples over here, and we sort of kind of carve out our areas, don't we? And we, we're creatures of habit. And you know, and that's okay. I don't, you don't have to change places. I, I don't care. But it's just nice to see all those friendly faces smiling back at you. They got your back. We're living this life together. We're, we're living this walk together. Aren't you glad that one day when Jesus called your name and said, come forth, there was a group of people that, Got their arms around you and helped you with that? Yeah. And we're committed to each other. We're, we're very committed to one another, Dale. I mean, we're in this, man. We're in this together. You know what I mean? Like, this may come as a shock, but my wife and I, hold on to your hat. We haven't always agreed on absolutely everything. And early, we didn't agree at all that she was right about everything. But through years of prayer and fasting, and the Holy Ghost working, I finally learned she is right about everything. Just because you have a, a dust up doesn't mean the relationship devol dissolves, right? 
that's that's the same thing just just because Martha's unhappy with Jesus right now because of his lack of performance in her life the way she wanted it the way she thought it should be I think church service should look like this and if you don't do church service the way I think you should do church service I'm gonna go find a church that does church service the way I think they should that, that's not what this is about because sometimes things are going to go the way you want them to and sometimes they're not going to go the way you want them to sometimes Jesus is going to show up on the scene and he's going to he's going to heal Peter's mother-in-law blam sometimes he's going to let Lazarus not only die but for four days in the grave and decay die I'm talking about really die not just a little bit die sometimes when you're waiting on Jesus things you love looks like it's dying but I know Nate but I know that even now he's able I know even now he's able let's stand together For everyone that is feeling a little tied up, a little bound up, or maybe, maybe you just have someone in your life that is, let's come. Let's come worshiping. Let's come believing. Let's let our faith stand when our heart can't. Let's, let's understand that there's going to be people up at this altar that need a little help. And maybe the person's not even in the building. Pray for them. God is able, and even now I know, even right now this morning I know, he's going to do a work as we call on the name of the Lord. There's healing in your life. There's deliverance. 